So here my switch side is ready. So I have an IP address in the right subnet matching my WISM management site and what I need to do is to set the lag on the CAT65 to communicate with that management interface. And this is done with the WISM family of command once again. Uh, so if you say WISM here, you see there are a couple of commands. Um, you can do service VLAN, that's what we did, or you can configure um, the link to the data side of one of the WISMs with the module uh, command. So of course you have uh, module 1, which is my WISM, as you may remember, in case you don't. To show module. So you see module 1 here. So if I say WISM module 1, I'm going to configure the WISM. So that's in case you would have several WISMs in the same CAT65, right? And then of course you're going to say which controller you want to configure within this uh, WISM. Here I'm talking about controller 1. And there are actually three commands that you can set. And those commands are going to activate the lag automatically. So you can say native VLAN, that's the VLAN which is untagged to the controller. Um, allowed VLAN, that's the list of VLANs that you want to allow on that trunk. And QoS trust, what do you trust? Well, probably you want to trust cost, right? So I'm going to say, I don't know, native VLAN. Just making it bad and ugly, VLAN 1. I'm going to say um, trust, and you can see we have DSCP or cost or IP precedence. We're going to say cost. So, unless there is a very specific case, you would trust cost on the controller. And if you want to know more about that, refer to the videos we have about QoS. And the last thing you can set is uh, WISM module 1, controller 2, uh, which controller 1, sorry, allowed VLANs. Uh, you know, 1 to 2100. Once again, if you see that, no problem. You just exclude that VLAN from the list. So you go 1 to 1001, 1002 to 2100. It should complain again, right? So you, you are going to restart from a higher number. And it's happy. Okay, I'm going to do the uh, same config real quick on the other WISM. So my other WISM is supposed to be in the same subnet. Okay, fair enough. So I don't need to recreate the interface. It's already here. Same VLAN. It's already there. So pretty easy. The only thing I really need to do is to um, use the WISM interface commands to re-enable the lag going to that second WISM. So WISM module 1 still. Controller 2 this time. And I'm going to say native VLAN is going to be 1. Next, I'm going to tell the switch that I'm going to trust cost. And last, I'm going to tell the switch that I'm allowing the VLANs. And this time I'm going to do it properly right from the beginning. So allow the VLAN 1 to 1001 and 1006 to 2100. done. At this point, my switch should be configured properly. Let's check. Show WISM status. And oh no, I don't see anything yet. <laughs> of course, what is going on here is that my site is configured, so then I need to activate the communication between the service interface of the switch, uh, sorry, of the uh, WISM and the switch. By the way, you can also check the configuration of each individual WISM module, so if you say show uh, WISM uh, module 1 uh, controller 1 status for example you can see a more detailed information about what's going on service port is down so that's why you have no communication service VLAN is 192 and you see it's the gigabit 1 dash slash 9 you don't know the MAC address yet and of course you don't have the IP addresses yet because you just don't know what's going on you see what VLANs are allowed and the native VLAN here so you need to enable the communication between the uh, service port and the CAT65. There are several ways of doing that. One of them is to reboot the switch. One of them is to reboot the controller. Uh, shut, no shut. You know, there are several ways here. 
Personally, I like to reboot the switch because uh, it allows me to do a couple of things while the switch is rebooting, so it's not a waste of time when you're in real lab, you can do some other stuff while the switch is rebooting. Uh, but only do that if you're sure that the configuration is right, right? Uh, you can also check um, the lags, check if everything is fine. So you see the uh, VLANs here are there, um, the mode is on, it's chunking, everything seems to be fine. So once you're sure of yourself, then you can reboot the switch if you want to. Uh, let me do it and use the time lapse to do that. And after a little while, if you say show wisdom status, oops, show, yeah, here we go. You see that now, now my uh, uh, wisdom are up and you see the first one has the IP address we granted in the first uh, reservation and the second one has the IP address in 10.4 um, by the way if you say show run last thing before we finish uh, you, you can see that interfaces are set with the right uh, subnet so you first have of course the, the, the pools here with the exclusion we had before nothing magic and when you go to the interfaces VLANs, and you see the, uh, these first interfaces are all set as we said to be trunk with the native VLAN, the allowed VLAN, and they are related to whatever channel group was automatically created. Um, notice that you see the first eight interfaces, but you probably won't see the ninth, yes, and the tenth interface because those are for the backplane communication, so you don't see them. So I rebooted my switch. You can also wait a little bit so, so that the communication activates. You can reboot the controller. So there are several ways of doing that. But at the end, uh, that's what you should see. You should see the show wisdom status showing that the communication is occurring. Um, so again, the CAT65 has quite a few other things which may be a little bit different from the, the other interfaces, you know, as far as QoS configuration or writing and switching are concerned. But nothing magic that should really stop you. Uh, and at least with this video, you have the first uh, step to have this communication occur. Uh, so you can focus on the more interesting part which is configuring the CAT65 um, as a switch not just as a communication mean to the WISMs. I hope this was useful for you. I would like to thank you for watching.